Hey guys, Tango here again, and I wanted to put together a quick video just to show you some of the critical corrections to the tutorial for the Iron Trench video, as well as take this uh, opportunity to kind of provide some answers to the very common questions that keep popping up in the comments to that video. So let's get started. All right, in the phase one redstone section here, I totally forgot to tell you to add 17 blocks of your choice to this dropper right there, okay? Now, over on the secondary village strip over here, some of you might have been noticing that your, your, your build might have worked the first time, but then after that it didn't seem to form correctly. Uh, the main reason for that is because this top uh, row of pistons here was not resetting correctly. They were staying retracted. Uh, I made a change to the redstone here just before I filmed the video, and I unfortunately did not test it enough. So anyway, what you need to do is from this torch here, come down and break that dust right there and just paste, place a repeater facing that way. Next, up here on the roof of the main structure, right where your water stream starts, and where you have the upward facing dropper, just go ahead and kill the water supply for now. Then this block right here, you need to change that with the top facing half slab, and then replace your water. What was happening was the last hopper there was still staying powered, so when phase two should have been ended, the, uh, the dropper wasn't firing correctly and the item was just sitting and a lot of you guys found this some of you guys actually figured out how to fix it um, but anyways go ahead and do that and then it'll actually reset so that you can reform again correctly next time all right the next one is not a correction as much as it is a strong recommendation uh, I gotta stress how important it is to light up everything around your doors uh, if you get a zombie spawning in here they pretty much make a beeline right for the doors and start smashing them and if they start breaking doors down, you pretty much get some villages that aren't going to spawn golems at all. And if that keeps happening, your whole system is going to kind of deteriorate over time. So you really want to prevent them from spawning here in the first place. So just go ahead and go crazy with the torches. Place them everywhere. Uh, you know, zombies can spawn in the blocks that doors are in. So you got to make sure your light levels, even in between there, are sufficient. So another good spot to put torches is right on the outside of the trench, or on the inside rather, like you see here. Uh, they will not block sky access so don't worry about that but just get torches everywhere guys all the way up on the the upper door clusters as well just just light it all up all right so for common problems that i'm seeing so far there aren't too many but one i've seen twice now is for whatever reason uh there's been some dust like that where even when that sticky piston is retracted this line still gets power that's uh, that's no good we don't want that we only want power to this line when that sticky is extended which basically means we are in phase two okay all right, another one I've seen that might be hard to spot is this uh, vertical RS Norlatch here. The torches were kind of flipped and it was in the wrong state. So when the system is not rebuilding or when it's in phase one, this torch here should be on, okay? This torch down here should be on only during phase two. So if for whatever reason you're kind of flopped around and you're in this state, when it's not rebuilding, then just go ahead and pop that torch and replace it so that it looks like this. Basically, you want to make sure that power is being supplied to this hopper here uh, all the time unless phase two is active. All right, this next one is just kind of a warning and a theoretical problem. Uh, it relates to the number of villages that you have in your world anywhere. Now, I'm not going to go into the, all the details of the code and everything, but Suffice to say that if you have, uh, you know, if you're approaching about a hundred villagers loaded anywhere in your world, they don't have to, it doesn't matter where they are, there's no range check or anything, but if you have more than about a hundred villagers, um, you're going to have issues, you might start running into issues where your villagers inside this system here don't detect the doors within the maximum six seconds that they're supposed to, which would cause the rebuilding process to fail. So. If, you know, I mention this because, you know, if you've got a, a good six or eight or, or even bigger existing iron golem farm, uh, you probably might be approaching that many villagers in that in those systems or in those villages. So what you might have to do is kill those villagers uh, and try and take the, the total number loaded in your world down below 70 or so, then you should be fine. All right, moving on to the frequently asked questions, or rather the questions that are appearing a lot in the comments of the video. Probably the most common one is, can this be built longer than 32? And parallel to that, can it be built shorter than 32? So to answer that, to, can it go longer? The short answer is no. The longer answer is yes, but it's going to be really complicated. You're going to need multiple village detectors all over the place. You're going to have to sync them up. 
that's not even a problem I want to handle. So pass on it. If you want more, just build a whole nother system. Uh, regarding can it go less? Uh, yes, it could. Uh, if you do, you know, you may run into issues that I haven't seen, but you basically just want to kind of chop it and just stop building. But, you know, you can compress the whole building down. You'll have to rearrange your redstone and stuff like that. I, you know, honestly, I would not recommend it. The only legit reason to not build it at 32 is resources. And you know what? Just, just go ahead and gather them. It's not that much. Um, I would just recommend doing the 32 personally. Next question, can you use glass panes instead of iron bars on the edge of the water drop here? Answer is yes, there's no problem at all with that. Go right ahead. Next question is, why does this thing have to be oriented north? That sounds kind of fishy. Is it taking advantage of a redstone bug? And the answer is no, it actually has nothing to do with redstone. What it's doing is using the order in which uh, villagers will detect doors and add them to a village, and it allows us to retract this whole line of pistons here and kind of add all those doors to the system at the same pass and ensure that they will link up correctly with the secondary strip. So it's not a bug, it's perfectly well-written code, it's just taking advantage of the way it's done it, so they're not going to fix that. Next question, what if the chunks that contain this system are unloaded while it's in the process of rebuilding? Will it break? Uh, the answer is that build cycle probably I'd say has a 90% chance of being totally fine, uh, given that most of the time is spent in uh, those hopper timer systems, which are unload friendly. If for whatever reason, you know, it does unload while like a signal is running across here, then yes, that build will break, but the uh, the system will just simply fail to spawn enough golems and the village or the, the golem detector will pick that up and restart a new process uh, as soon as it can. So there's no concern there. Does logging out and logging back in cause the system to rebuild? Is that going to happen every time I log out of the game? The answer is no. Uh, interestingly enough, villages and all their doors do persist uh, when you log out and log back in. Uh, the problem is when chunks are just naturally unloaded for distance reasons. That's when they collapse and either merge or more likely in this case get destroyed. Uh, so yeah, log out, log back in all you want. It's not going to cause any problems. Is it okay to build the system half in the spawn chunks and half outside the spawn chunks? Uh, no, don't do that. Either build them all in the sp build the whole thing inside the spawn chunks, as I definitely recommend, or build it completely outside the spawn chunks. Don't straddle the line. Can this thing be built in a different order than presented in the tutorial? Uh, yes, build it in any order you want, whatever makes sense for you, uh, including villagers. You know, put them into their place when whenever is convenient for you. As long as when you're done, you run a full rebuild of the system, everything will be just fine. Can this thing be built in any biome? Uh, yes, it can. Just if you're going to be in a taiga or wintry type biome where the water might freeze, you're going to have to watch out for that. During phase two, when the villages are offset from the drop shaft, isn't it possible for golems to spawn on this outside uh, perimeter? And that's a very good question. That's why these slabs are set up the way they are here. That's why there's double row here. In a double row down here there's not enough space for them to physically spawn in between these gaps anymore i did have that problem originally and it was corrected can you build this thing in the nether or can you build it in the end uh you can build it in the end it'll work just fine as long as you get your villagers there without any problems uh in the nether the only way it'll work is if you use the tricks to get above the ceiling and build it above the uh the, what would be the normal bedrock ceiling Will this golem farm cause a ton of server lag when it's assembled? The answer is no. When all 32 villages are working and spawning golems, there's almost no load on the server. Uh, the only time there's going to be some load is during the rebuild process when all the redstone is uh, moving around and the repeaters are lighting up and stuff, but very negligible. Is the ice on the roof absolutely required? I don't have silk touch and I can't get ice. That's not a problem. Uh, all you got to do is instead use a bunch of hoppers and make a return path with the hopper chain. I went with ice just because it's a lot less resources, uh, but a, a return hopper chain will work just as fine. Take out the dropper there and just basically make a big loop. Come all the way down and feed it into these hoppers right there. Is the village mod required? No, it's not. It's just extremely helpful, especially in uh, knowing whether it's working or not. Does this work with bucket? Uh, yes, it will, but the village mod will not, so you're on your own as far as knowing whether it works. But if you do it right, it'll work, and uh, you'll see the golem spawning knowing that you've done it right. 
How many doors will I need? 704. Yep. How many repeaters run across the bottom path here? Answer is 53. Is Tango an obsessive lunatic? Yes. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Uh, I do apologize for what was probably an exceedingly boring uh, video here, but I had to get those critical fixes to the tutorial out there. Just uh, I know a lot of you guys are stuck, and that's why I do apologize for any inconvenience and time wasted in trying to figure out what was going on. So implement those uh, fixes that I suggested, and you should be good to go. Uh, also, I want to stress that if you're building this on a multiplayer server and you're running into some issues, uh, don't hesitate to shoot me a message on YouTube and we'll see what we can do. I've already jumped into three or four different multiplayer servers and helped them get theirs working, so if I have the time, I will uh, I'll help you guys out as needed. I really want to see these things working all over the place, alright? So, that's going to do it then, I think, for now, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!